Okay, let's get started here on number one. Um, so what is 7 eighths as a decimal? Uh, if we go back to the old days, we can do long division. We're dividing 7 by 8, so we take 7, divide it by 8. 8 can't go into 7, so we give it that decimal place. Uh, 8 goes into 78, uh, 8 times, gives us 64. We subtract, we get eight, uh, 6, and then we uh, pull down another 0. 8 goes into 60, how many times? 7 times, that's 56. We get 4, pull down a 0, that's 40. 8 goes into 40, 5 times. So 0.875. All right. Uh, the water tank had a maximum capacity of 84 gallons. If the tank was 2 sevenths full, how many gallons of water did it have? So we talked about this, how multiplying by 2 sevenths uh, will find 2 sevenths of something, right? So if we take 84 and multiply it by 2 sevenths, all right, might be helpful to write this over 1. helps us to see them as fractions. So we can multiply straight across. We learned about that. Um, but maybe 84 cancels with 7. We didn't really get into that. But um, really, if you think about it, if, I can, if I'm multiplying straight across and I can uh, um, switch the order of things. Multiplying 84 over 1 by 2 over 7 would be the same as 84 over 7 times 2 over 1. There's really no difference because the numerators are multiplied together, the denominators are multiplied together. So we can see if 84 divides 7. Just look into that. Right? So we grab our calculator. We try 84 divided by 7, we get 12. So yes, it does. So we get 12 times 2, and that's 24. Okay. Move on here. We see uh, George cuts this massive two-thirds slice of pie. Right? He takes this whole thing, so two pieces that are they're both a third, uh, and then he ate a fourth of this. Okay, so we could look at it visually, and then we'll look at it mathematically. Uh, it just so happens we can cut this into four pieces, right? How big are these pieces where there were three, right? These were a third. We cut them in half, so now there must be six. It must take six of these to make up the whole, right, if we did that. Um, we could also just cut each piece into four pieces, kind of like we did in class. I shouldn't say kind of like. It is exactly like what we did in class. And then count one-fourth of each of those, right? Or we learned in class that it's the same as taking two-thirds. We have two-thirds of the pie. We want to find one-fourth of that pie, so we want to multiply a fourth by two-thirds, figure out what is a fourth of two-thirds. Okay, and remember from the previous problem, we, to, we can cross-cancel, right? So we can think, do two and four share any factors? They do. Uh, that makes this a two. So across the top, we have not a zero here. That's a common mistake. We have a one. One times one is one, and three times two is six. Okay, and if we look at our picture here, that makes sense. This would be right, one-fourth of that. Fourth of that. Those are both twelve. So when we put two twelves together, we get a sixth. Uh, yeah. So one sixth of the pie in total. That's what George ate of the pie. Uh, all right. So fifteen has how many three fourths in it? To make this a little easier, maybe we'll, we'll try a simpler problem. Like uh, use the same wording, but throw some different numbers in there. Like sixteen has how many? Uh, let's see how many twos in it, right? So forget about 15 and forget about 3 fourths for a second. 16 has how many twos in it? Now what kind of question is this? Um, how would I figure out how many twos are in 16? I could draw a little picture of it. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I could divide them into groups of two and I just gave away the solution there by saying I divide it into groups of two. Right? I figure out how many groups of 2 there are, and of course that's going to be 8. Or I do 16 divided by 2, and that's 8. So what are we looking at here? We're, we're trying to break up a big group into um, a number of smaller groups. We're trying to figure out how many 3 fourths are in 15, so all we have to do is divide 15 by 3 fourths, right? Just like we do 16 divided by 2. So let's... And I bring up that simpler problem because I'm not going to draw a picture of dividing 15 into groups of 3 fourths. It just would probably get pretty confusing looking. But now we can use our knowledge and realize this is a division problem, right? And we know about in class, uh, what we learned in class is that we're going to multiply uh, 15 by the reciprocal of 3 fourths, 
right? The reciprocal of the denominator. So 15 over 1 times 4 over 3. 3 goes into five, 15 5 times, so 5 times 4 is 20. So there are 20 3 fourths in 15. Right? If we were to draw 15 pies, and I won't do that, but if we were to draw 15 pies and, and divide them into fourths, and then, okay, there's 1 3 fourths, and then here's 2 3 fourths, and here's three, three fourths, and four three fourths, and four three fourths makes three. Uh, that's not surprising. But there we go, it was just a division problem and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator there. And we move on to number five. So 5.6 as a decimal, short, short story here. Move the decimal over two places, 0 0.056. Right. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Whenever we have a decimal, we're always, and we want to change it to a, or I'm sorry, a percent, and we want to move it to a decimal, uh, we just move the, the decimal place over twice. Okay, so 100% uh, is 1 as a decimal, and 50% is 0 0.5 as a decimal. I suppose I should write percents here. 1% uh, is 0.01 as a decimal, 0.05% is 0 0.0005 as a decimal, okay? And that's it for that page, so we'll move on to the next. All right, what is 45% of 175, okay? Uh, we could treat this like a fraction, because we, we know about fractions from our discussion in class. 45% is the same as 45 out of 100. Okay. That means, that's what it means to have 45% of something. It just means that, that you have 40, the ratio of 45 to every 100. So if 45% of people like pizza, then 45 out of, one, out, out of every 100 people likes pizza. It's just a ratio. So if we want to know what 45% of 175 is, we just want to know what 175 times 45 over 100 is, okay? And really, when we take 45 and divide it by 100, remember, if you divide by 100, you move the decimal place over twice. So we just write the percent as a decimal and multiply. So 175 times 0.45, or 175 times 45 over 100, what do we, whatever we want to look at it as. And we'll grab a calculator, make this fast and simple. 78.75, there we go, and what percent of 52 is 12, okay, got to think about the wording here, so what percent of 52 is 12, okay, so 12 is some percent of 52, All right, so 12 divided by 52. Remember that when we want to find percents, we want to take the part and divide by the whole. By the wording here, we're taking a piece of 52. 52 is the larger piece. Well, I don't want to use the word larger. I shouldn't use that word. Because sometimes we want to know percents. And uh, the th we could find what uh, 52 is a percentage of 12. And it would be you know, over 100%. Sometimes that happens. So I shouldn't use the word larger. But um, this is the thing that we want to find a percentage of, right? Percent of 52. So 52 is the whole, and 12 is the, quote, part. And so we divide 12 by 52, and I take about four times longer to explain that than was necessary, but there we go. Uh, 0.23, okay, so that's the decimal, right? 0.23, so we want to round, or we don't want to round, we want to move the decimal place over to the right twice to find the percent, okay? So I've got 23.08%. Oh, it says nearest tenth. So 23.1%. This is the tenths place. You can see here, if we were to round up the tenths place after we move the decimal over as we should, then we round up to one here. Okay. 32% uh, to a fraction. Percents to fraction has got to be the easiest thing because it's always out of 100. 32 out of 100, and then you simplify, if possible, which this is possible, and we can at least do uh, 
4, okay, 32 divided by 4 is 8, and 100 divided by 4 is 25, and there you go. There's no more simplifying possible. Okay, how many inches are in, 30, in 35 feet? These conversion problems, um, they're not too tricky. All right, let's look at it real quick. 35 feet. <clears throat> All I need to do is think about what units am I in and what units do I want to eventually be in, okay? And this can take multiple steps. You don't have to take uh, one step. It can take multiple steps. If I know how many inches are in a foot, then I'm, then I'm great. If I'm converting feet to, um, well, if I'm converting, say, inches to miles, I might want to go from inches to feet and then from feet to miles. Okay, so you may go several different steps, but I do know that there are 12 inches in one foot. Okay, so I know that in my head. I know there are 12 inches in one foot, okay? Well, if I take 12 inches and divide it by one foot, 12 inches and one foot are exactly the same size. So if I take 12 inches divided by one foot, I get the number one, right? Because they're equivalent. Anything divided by itself is one. 12 inches and a foot are the same thing. They are each other. 12 inches and a foot are equal. So if we divide them, we get one, okay? So if I multiply this number by 12 inches over one foot, this part right here is equal to one. So all I'm doing here is multiplying by one, right? So this is what goes on in my mind uh, when I'm thinking about this. I just think about what, uh, what conversion ratio do I know? Uh, do I know how many inches are in a foot? Yes, I do, so I'm going to, to uh, multiply by that ratio in such a way that the denominator has the units that I'm trying to cancel and the numerator then has the units that I'm gonna move into, okay? So I've canceled out the feet. I'm gonna do 35 times 12 now. I'm gonna be in inches. Uh, I'm not gonna pretend like I can do that quickly in my head. So 35 times 12, 420, 420 inches. Okay. Another conversion. Convert 15,840 feet into miles. Okay. Um, so, this is a strange thing to tell you. Um, so, one mile equals 1,760 yards, and one yard equals three feet. Uh, if you know that a mile has 5,280 feet, um, actually, I'm going to look that up. Okay, of course, I was right about that, 5,280 feet in a mile. We know that from Remember the Titans. Um, you can use that. So here, I'm going to work it out one way and then in the way that you would if you didn't know that. So we take 15,840. We multiply it by, uh, okay, so this is in feet, right, feet. I'm going to cancel out those feet, so I'm going to put feet down here. That's 5,280 feet. And then I'm at one mile. Uh, one mile is the same as 5,280 feet, so I'm just multiplying by one here, so I'm not changing anything as far as the value of the number. So 15,840, 15,840 divided by 5,280, that's really what's going on here, we get three miles. If I didn't know that and I was, uh, you know, really thankful that they gave me these conversion ratios here, uh, I want to take it from feet into miles. Um, here I can take it from feet into yards and then from yards into miles. So this is what I was talking about, how we could do it in a couple different steps. 15,840 feet. Okay, whatever I do here, this next ratio needs to cancel out the feet. Right? This is a simple way of thinking of it. We're just going to cancel out those feet. Okay, how many feet? Well, I know that there's three feet in a yard, so I'll put three feet to one yard. Well, now I'm in yards. I don't want to be in yards. I want to be in miles. Okay. So this next conversion ratio needs to get me a little bit closer. Uh, I need to cancel out yards. Okay, how many yards? Well, that was 1,760 uh, yards. So I'm going to cancel out the yards to one mile. Okay, this is equal to the number one. This is equal to the number one. All I'm doing is multiplying this by one and then by one again. So nothing's really changing. But along the way, I've canceled out feet. I've canceled out yards. And now I am in miles. Okay. What do you think three times 1,760 is going to be? I bet you it's 5,280. Um, I'll pretend like we didn't know that. 
180, right? So down here we have 5,280. This is really over one. So we're gonna take 15,840 divided by 5,280 and get three again, okay? How many millimeters are in 4.511 meters? So I have 4.511 meters. And I'm supposed to figure out how many millimeters are in that. Well, I'm gonna multiply it by a fraction that has meters so that the meters cancel and has millimeters here. Now, how many millimeters are there in one meter? Uh, there are a thousand to one meter. That's something we should know, okay? There's uh, centimeters, okay? Centimeters would be a hundred. There's lots of things that have cent that are a hundred. A cent of a dollar, right, is a hundredth of a dollar. A centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. Uh, a centurion was, uh, well, that is a, is a person who commands a hundred soldiers in, uh, in ancient Rome. Uh, but there's a lot of things that have the prefix cent and have to do with hundred, so we're used to that hundred millimeter. Milla is a thousand uh, millimeter millipede, uh, millisecond, okay, so that's a thousand. Uh, but I digress. So 4.54, oh, sorry, 4.511 times a thousand. Do you remember the trick for multiplying by a thousand? You move it over however many zeros there are, right? Multiply by a number that's one, followed by so many zeros. Move this over three decimal places, that will make it four, five, one, one, right? You moved it over three, so it's 4,511 uh, millimeters. Okay. I think this is the last conversion one here that we're about to do. 140 square feet into square inches. Now this is a bit tricky. 140 square feet. Okay, so are there, uh, we know that there's 12 inches in a foot, but are there 12 square inches in, in, in one square foot? No, there's not. Um, in a square foot, that means, oh man, hold on. All right, I fixed that problem, I think. All right, so here we have a, Square foot, that's one foot by one foot. Well, that's 12 inches by 12 inches. All right, you see how we're going here, and the, uh, the definition of area would be the uh, length times the width, height times whatever you want to call it. But this measurement times this measurement, what would be the area of something that is 12 inches by 12 inches? Well, that would be 12 times 12, that would be 144 square inches. So you gotta watch out for that. So 140 square feet, that's gonna be a lot of square inches, right? That's 140 of these, all right? How many uh, square inches would that be? Well, we're gonna multiply in a way. It cancels out our square feet, okay? One square foot is equal to 144 square inches, all right? So we're gonna multiply 140 square feet by 144, and that's gonna be a lot, 140. 144, 20,160. Yeah, so a lot. Uh, we're going to calculate the value of each expression below, so we're going to calculate the value of this. So it's just a matter of following the order of operations. Do we remember uh, how that goes? Uh, well, we do our uh, parentheses first, but you know we'll, we'll talk about this, uh, the order of operations. Um, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of things that make to make math uh, less intuitive and more procedural, okay? Um, procedures are fine for running a classroom, but for math, there's truth to it. We can know it without having to be told it, right? All we have to know is that parentheses are a way of grouping stuff together, okay? Um, we have to just know what the writer of an expression is trying to communicate. So this person here is trying to say, I want to do some stuff. What I want to do first is I want to group together negative 9 and, uh, and a positive 17. I want those to be added together, okay? So now this becomes three parentheses. Uh, 17 minus 9 is 8. All right. Okay, now what does it mean when I have a 3 next to a parentheses? There's no addition. There's no subtraction. There's no anything there. So that's uh, assumed to be multiplication. So now I'm going to multiply 3 times 8. There's nothing else to do first. This is the only thing that's left to do. So there's 24, right? Okay. So 
next. Um, yes, we, we do kind of need an order of operations. We need to, uh, just to save ourselves a little bit of time uh, and a little bit of ink, we agree that we'll do multiplication before we do addition or subtraction. Okay, so really, we wouldn't even need an order of operations if we were willing to write lots and lots of parentheses, okay? So this person wanted us to multiply these things together first, but so that we don't have to use so many parentheses, someone decided along the way, let's just agree to do multiplication before addition and subtraction, right? So um, first we'll do that, and then we'll subtract 21. So 5 times a negative 8, I'm sure we all remember that a positive times a negative is a negative. This is going to be negative 40. And then we're going to subtract 21. Okay, so that is going to be negative 61. Right, remember when you subtract a negative, or you subtract a number from a negative, you just go more negative. Right. Okay. Here we are, next page. We're evaluating this expression. Okay. Uh, it is it should be pretty clear. I don't, I don't need to tell you to do parentheses before uh, exponents. Parentheses are a pretty universal sign that I want you to concentrate on these things, uh, figure out what's going on in here, and then we can move outside the parentheses, right? So we want to do 2 times 3. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6 to the third. What does to the third mean? I hope you remember that. Maybe not. Uh, we'll get a little refresher here. When I raise something to a power, it means I want to multiply this number by itself this many times. So we're going to multiply this many of these together. 6 times 6 times 6. I think that's 216, if my memory serves me correctly. Let's see, 6 to the third, 216. Okay. Uh, yes, it is correct. All right, solve the equation below. Some real simple equations to you know, up to some, some fairly complex equations. If you couldn't solve all these, that's fine. Uh, this one, you should be able to get this. Um, what I really, really want to emphasize here is a, it's not a suggestion, uh, it, but it's something that I can't force you to do because I can't be inside your brain controlling what you do, but you really have to move away from just saying, well, I can just tell what x is, okay? I know that it seems like a pain to, instead of just saying you know what x is, to add 14 on both sides, okay? It seems silly, and it seems like I can just tell, right? So why would I need to uh, do something like add 14 to both sides when I can just see it, I can just tell? Um, the reason is, let me just throw this out there, the reason is, when we see something like 2x squared plus 4x minus 17 equals 123, you can't just see it, okay? Now this, this equation is not that complicated, it's not very difficult to solve if you started way, way back here and you started understanding why you would add 14 both sides. Why is that legal? Why is that a good idea? How does that reveal what x is, okay? And once we create those habits, We've got, uh, you know, just like someone playing sports would practice the most mundane things. If they want to be very good, they just get it down to muscle memory. We need to get this down to our mental muscle memory, right? And then we can get to being able to solve an equation like this, okay? But if all along you were just saying, ah, I can see it, you get to here, you can't just see it, right? Unless you're like some kind of a savant. That's uh, very rare that you can just see the solution to a quadratic or a more complicated equation. All right, so please uh, understand that I know what I'm talking about and that you should uh, add 14 to both sides rather than just say, eh, I can just tell, right? And without realizing it, if you were going to try to figure out what x is, you're saying, I'm going to subtract 14 from some number and get 39, you're already going to add 14 to x uh, in your head. So you might as well just do it in your work. Anyway, all that is to say, uh, let's see, that's a 3, that's 53. So there we go. Um, next. Same idea here. Uh, it's a little more complicated, right? Um, maybe that will help you see that you should uh, get in the habit of manipulating both sides of the equation until you isolate x. That's what algebra is all about. Well, it's a lot of what algebra is about. So we subtract one third from this side, cancels out. You know, one third minus one third is zero, leaves x by itself. So now we're going to know what x equals once we take 
one third away from three fifths. Of course, we need a common denominator. We know that from class. So we are going to multiply this by three, multiply this by three, so we get nine fifteenths. Multiply this by five and this by five, so we're going to get minus five fifteenths. So we get four fifteenths. And it doesn't simplify, so we leave it just like that. Move this up. Okay. All right, so this, just this equation is even complicated enough that you may have trouble just seeing it. You may be able to sit there and mentally figure it out. But again, really, you need to get in the habit of uh, whittling it down a little bit by little bit. Okay, so we're going to add 15 on both sides. Forty-three plus fifteen, that's eight, that's five. So then we divide by two. X equals twenty. Uh, let's see, twenty-five, twenty. Uh, yeah, so twenty-nine. Um, yeah, so X equals. y over 3 plus 4 equals 15. Okay, so let's just take this a little bit at a time. We could definitely subtract 4 from both sides. And all that does is 4 minus 4 is 0. And over here, we get our uh, 11. So y over 3 equals 11. Right? Some number divided by 3 equals 11. Well, whatever that number is, uh, it would have to be 3 times bigger than 11, right? Multiply by 3 over 1 here, that would cancel out the 3. Multiply by 3 over 1, or we don't have to write over, over 1, just 11 times 3. y equals 33. Okay. Here we're getting kind of into the territory that if you don't remember this from pre-algebra, it's okay. We're going to spend time on this, uh, so don't sweat it too much. We have 5x, we have 6x, right? That's like saying we have 5 apples and we have 6 apples. They are the same thing. We have a number of x's and a number of x's. Here's five of them here, and here's six of them over here. We just want to gather them up and, and say how many we have all together, and clearly we have 11 of them. We have 11 x's. Okay, that's still equal to 99. Well, if 11 x's is worth 99, then if we divide that group by 11, we'll figure out what one x is worth. So x is equal to 9. Right? Next, oh, I didn't think this went on to another page, but I guess it did. Uh, that's all right, we'll just do it on there. Sorry for the answer line being on the next page. So how do we solve for x? Um, I think you could go about it a couple, we could go about it a lot of different ways, but I'll just go about it in a couple different ways. You may remember the distributive property, which says we take seven, we distribute it to x, and we distribute it to four, we get seven x plus 28, equals 105, and now we have a familiar looking problem. We subtract 28, we get 7x equals 105 minus, grab this guy, 105 minus 28, 77, divide by 7, and x equals 11. Okay. Or, now this may not be as obvious. Let's take a look at this. This is 7 times this thing, this whole thing is it's a, it's a thing. It's like one entire unit that x plus 4 is. It is grouped together. It is one number, really. right? Whatever x is, we plug it in, we add 4, that will be one number. So it's 7 times a number. So if we have 7 times a number, what if we divide by 7? What happens then? Well, uh, 7 is a factor of the numerator. 7 is a factor of the denominator, right? just like uh, if we had 49 over 7. 7 is a factor of 7. 7 is a factor of 49. So we can cancel out that factor of 7. Right? This is 7 times 7. So we're, really, we're canceling out that 7, and we leave 7. So we can cancel out this 7 and this 7. We're left with x plus 4. Divide by 7 over here. x plus 4 equals 105 over 7. Uh, let's see what's 105 over 7. 15. So we have x plus 4 equals 15. We subtract 4 on both sides. x equals 11. J. 
just like we found here. All right, same thing. There's that answer line on the next page. All right, reduce each fraction below. Okay. Um, we just need to, when, when we're simplifying fractions, that means we're canceling out common factors. A factor is something that's multiplied by something else, okay? So uh, this is already factored, right? Five is a prime number. Down here we have five times five times x. That's what we're seeing down here. So five times five times x, do we have any common factors? Yeah, we got a common factor of five. We can cancel that out. We got a one up here, so that's one over five times x, and there's nothing else to do. So one over five times x, it's done, okay? Here we have 3 times x times x. That's what x squared means. Uh, here we have, uh, let's say, 3 times 4. That's 3 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x times x times x times x. That's 6 x's. See a factor of 3 in common? Uh, I got a factor of x there, factor of x there, factor of x, factor of x. And there are no common factors left. We have a 1 up here. Everything has been canceled in the numerator. Here we have 2 times 2 is 4, and x to the fourth. All right, simplify each expression below. How can we simplify this? Well, this is 9x. This is minus 2x. I have 9x's. I take away 2x's. I have 7x's. They are, they are like terms. All right, how about this one? Uh, well, we can multiply straight across. We get 10 times uh, x squared. And then we get uh, 25 times 16. Uh, well, that's going to be 400 times x. Okay. And now, just like before, just like this previous problem, we are looking for common factors. Okay. So this is 10. Does that factor of 10? That does. So this is completely canceled. This is left as 40. Uh, this is x squared, this is x. That's, okay, what we have here is x times x over 40 times x. And a factor of x, factor of x that gets canceled, so we have x over 40. Here we have uh, 3y uh, over 13 plus 7y over 26. If you weren't able to get this, uh, that's fine. Uh, but what we do have is the adding of fractions. What do we need when we add fractions? We need common denominators. Why? Because the denominator tells us how big the pieces are. Okay? This is a bigger piece than this piece. Right? Because it only takes 13 to make the whole, whereas it takes 26 of these to make the whole. If we want to find a common denominator, though, we would multiply this by 2. Right? That would make 26. And we'll multiply this by 2 as well. Okay? So we're going to get 6y over 26 plus 7y over 26. These two fractions get added together, and of course the denominator is 26 because we're adding up pieces that are this big, right? So that doesn't change. We add straight across the uh, numerators here. Uh, y and y, these are our two common terms, two like terms. Um, we have six y's here and seven y's here. Altogether we have 11. Uh, no, we have 13. 13 y's. Um, but 13 and 26 have common factors of 13. So what do we have? We have y over 2. So y over 2. Right. Uh, here it gets into, uh, I'm sure, the most complex adding or subtracting of fractions you probably saw last year. Uh, so if, if you don't recall it, don't sweat that. Uh, but we need a common denominator. Right? We need to multiply this denominator by something and this denominator by something so that the denominators are the same. They, are, they both have a z, so I don't have to worry about that. But I would have to multiply a 2 by a 5 to get a 10. So I'll multiply that by 5. And a 5 by a 2, so I can get 10. So now I'll have 10z and 10z. So I have 15 over 10z minus 8 over 10z. And now, uh, 15 minus 8, that's going to be uh, 5, 3, so 7. All right, right. There we go. Over 10z. So 7 over 10z. Almost through this. Uh, translate each problem into an equation and solve. 
Uh, okay, so this is, starts off with a question. Let's try and find all the specific pieces of information we need. How long did it take Ted to drive? So this, he's driving a car, uh, a new sports car. Unnecessary information, 272 miles if his average speed was 68 miles per hour. Okay, so how do we figure that out? If I'm driving at uh, 68 miles per hour, uh, you know, how do I use that information to figure out how far I've gone? Well, I would take 68 and say I've driven for two hours. I would multiply it by two, and it would tell me how far I went. If I went for three hours, I would change it to a three, and that's how far I would drive in three hours. Change it to a four, that's how far I've driven in four hours. But we don't know how long we've dri uh, driven. We do know that after we figure it all out, we'll have gone 272 miles, right? So 68 times x, right? x stands in for the number of hours we've driven. Once we take 68 times that number, we'll get 272. That'll be the number of hours we've driven. So we'll divide by 68. And x equals... Four hours exactly. Okay, so x is four. So our equation was 68x equals 272. Our solution, x equals four. Uh, next page, last page. Uh, Mr. Drysdale earned 906.25, so $906.25 cents in interest in one year on money that he had deposited in his local bank. If the bank paid an interest rate of 6.25%, how much money did Mr. Drysdale deposit? Okay, so we have to understand how percentages work. Uh, so he earns 6.25% on top of the money that he uh, puts into the bank, okay? So say I put $30 in the bank, and I get 6.25%, remember we want to turn that into a decimal, we want to work with it in an equation. If I multiply this by 0 0.0625, what I'm going to find is 6.25% of $30. Okay, let's, let's see what that is. Uh, 0.0625 times $30 is $1.875. dollars $1 $1.875. Now, it's, if I just take that at face value and, and, and assume that that means that's how much money I have, that doesn't seem like very much money. But we have to keep in mind that's how much money we made on top of the $30. So we'd add that to the $30, right? Okay. So I'll keep it simple for now uh, and, and think of it like that. There's, there's a way to, to shorten it up, uh, but it seems that that works best for for most people. So if I take 906, uh, oh, this is how much I made, or this is how much I have at the end. If I take an unknown amount and I multiply it by 0 0.0625, what does that tell me? That original amount, like $30, uh, is multiplied by 0 0.0625, that's 6.25% of the original amount, okay? Now that's going to be a little piece of the original amount, but that's going to be what I add to what I started with. What did I start with? X. I started with X. Okay, and altogether that's going to come out to 906.25. Okay, so this is 0 0.0625x. This is 1x. Okay, let's kind of go back a page and look at these simplifying. Look, 9x minus 2x is 7x. Um, let's see. Uh, 6y plus 7y. This is 13y. Um, I guess that's all we have there. I thought we had another like terms thing, but when we have two things that are like terms, we can put them together. So again, 9x minus 2x, 7x. 6y plus 7y, 13y. So what do we expect to see over here? 1x plus 0 0.0625x is 1 plus 0 0.065. That's 1. 0 0.065 x's, right? I have a whole x here, I have 0 0.0625 of an x, so altogether I have 1.065 x's is equal to 906.25. And if you think about it, this is just 106.25% of x, right? We start out with 100% of our money, we add 6.25%, so we get 106.25%, right? 
So that makes sense. We'll divide by 1.0625. calculator we take 906.25 divided by 1.0625 we started with $852.94 right. last one there's some number that if you subtract 15 from it let's just start there let's just start right there some number uh, we should uh, learn pretty soon here in algebra. When we talk about some number, some number that we don't know the value of, we can call it x. It's really uh, the standard letter that we use to represent numbers, an unknown number. So there it is, we call it x. And what are we going to do with it if you subtract 15 from it first, and then multiply that by 7, okay? So I'm going to take x, I'm going to subtract 15, and then I'm going to multiply this by uh, 7. How do I show that I want to do this first and then multiply by 7? Well, let's just group it together and say, okay, do that. Then multiply that by 7. Uh, the result, okay, once that's done, it is 28. Okay, so now find the number. Right? This is almost exactly like one I remember seeing uh, a little bit ago. Plus it down here. Yeah, right there. Almost exactly the same thing. Seven times some parentheses equals some other number. So same deal. All right. I think most people feel comfortable distributing first. So we get 7x minus 15 times 7. 105 equals 28. So we'll add 105. 7x equals uh, 20 plus 105, so 133 divided by 7. Uh, yeah. I'm going to double check that because I like to double check myself. Now we divide that by 7, we get 19. There's our answer. There we go. Maybe that doesn't look good. All right, well. Thanks for watching all, or even just a tiny part of that. I um, hope that was helpful. And uh, if you need anything from me, let me know. We'll go over um, these topics. Um, we'll go over some of these topics uh, and, and review them. Some of them we'll go over pretty extensively. Most of those at the beginning of the test. Um, we're going to assume that we, we get that, right? We get fractions. We can multiply by fractions. We know if we want 2 sevenths of, of 85, we'll multiply 85 by 2 sevenths and all that kind of stuff. Um, but of course, this is an algebra class. We are going to talk about what algebra is and what makes algebra algebra. Uh, so we'll go into solving equations, that kind of thing, like it was a pretty new thing, a pretty new deal. All right, so that about does it. Again, thanks for watching. See you later.